In January, the University of Minnesota hired a 36-year-old head coach who had just guided Western Michigan to a trip to the Cotton Bowl. And after a summer fueled with row-the-boat energy and increasing expectation, P.J. Fleck and his Gophers are moments away from putting their oar in the water. A gorgeous evening in Minneapolis as we kick off the 2017 season. Football on BTN presented by Taco Bell. P.J. Fleck, a team from his former conference, the MAC, the Buffalo Bulls, are paying a visit to the Twin Cities. P.J. Fleck waiting to bring his team out from the tunnel and onto the field here in Minneapolis for the first time. You know that there's going to be no shortage of energy from him or these Gophers tonight, Mason. That's the first time I've seen that guy stand still right there, I can tell you that. You talk about high energy. I had a chance to sit down with him for a half hour the other day. He wore me out. I mean, he takes high energy to a whole new level. I love the guy. 36 years old, second youngest Power 5 coach, and they are just waiting. And so much anticipation. It was almost palpable on campus today. You could really feel a new buzz, a new sense of energy around this program. Well, ever since he's been hired, it's been P.J. Fleck nonstop. There's billboards all over town. There's T-shirts all over town. He's done a great job of going out in the public, going to the students. And, you know, all the talking's done. You know, like they talk about row the boat. Well, now the oars are in the water. Let's go. A team coming off a good season last year, 9-4, and four, went to the Holiday Bowl, won that bowl, and then you got a visiting crew in Buffalo coming in with just a 2-10 and 10 season. And P.J. Fleck did face this Buffalo team last year in the MAC and beat them 38 to nothing. He's hoping for the same type of success tonight. With that, we welcome you to the booth. Hello, everybody. Along with Glenn Mason, I'm Brandon Gunn. Well, we talked about the energy, all the excitement. He also wants to make this a culture change here in Minneapolis, doesn't yeah. he? You know, he talks about culture nonstop. And I have a lot of people ask me, what does it mean by culture? This isn't a losing program. We've been to bowl games every year, won nine games last year. I'm going to tell you what he's talking about. He talks about Minnesota being a sleeping giant, but they haven't won a championship for 50 years. His culture he needs everybody to buy in, players, coaches, administrators, students, even the media. That's what he talks about rowing the boat. If we want a championship, we all got to be going in the same direction. Yeah, he wants to row that boat. And speaking of P.J. Fleck, we had him mic'd up in the locker room just a moment ago. Okay, here we go, here we go, here we go. Let's go, Connor, be you. Come here. Love you, man. Love you too, buddy. Let's go, big boy. Huh? Love you, man. Hey. Love you, man. Yes, Go be you. Got it? Lead this football team. Yes, you're how, you're how, you're how. Yes, sir. Heather tells me my wife is like my information person. It's a great quote. Even on you and I's worst days, right, it's some people's best day. And if you look around the country, it's pretty much almost everybody's best day. So always keep that perspective. So some sound from P.J. Fleck, who we said brings the energy. But as, as we were talking about, they were 9-4 and four last year. This cupboard isn't bare, and especially it's not bare at running back. They have a dynamic duo back there, don't they? Yeah, some plays they have a lack of depth. Some plays a lack of experience, but not running back. When I brought running back up to him, man, he started smiling. And he's got two dynamic backs. Let's start with Shannon Brooks. I mean, this guy is really something special. He was banged up a year ago sideline he only had 650 yards but i put him in that category now you see him now you don't big play potential if he 
breaks the first line of defense. He may be off to the races. Unbelievable back. And don't forget about Rodney Smith. He's so good between the tackles, isn't he? Uh, he's my favorite because football, first and foremost, is about toughness. 1,154 yards last year. I don't know of a running back in the Big Ten that gained more yards, tougher yards than him because 90% of them were tackle, tackle, as you mentioned. I love the guy because he gets those extra yards. If one tackler is not going to take him down, he's a downhill runner. I don't mean he doesn't have vision to make cuts, but it takes a whole bunch of defenders to take them down. Offensive linemen, when they watch this type of effort on film, man, that pumps them up. You love blocking for a guy like that. So no questions at running back, but there is a question between who we're going to see at quarterback. Yeah, we're going to see two guys tonight, Croft and Rhoda. That's the good news. The bad news, neither one of those guys have much experience. Rhoda started one football game. Now, P.J. Fleck was hoping to have one starter through spring practice, through the uh, fall, uh, two day practices, he couldn't come up with. So you're going to see both of them tonight. And he made an, a special emphasis that he is going to be unemotional tonight, which means no knee jerk reaction. He's going to give both these guys their just due tonight. So certainly they'll be leaning on the running back position to get PJ Fleck off to a good start in Minnesota. And as we welcome in the third member of our on air crew, Kendra D. St. Alban, he's hoping to get off to a better start, certainly here, than he did at Western Michigan. Correct, Kendra? Yeah, absolutely. Hoping to get off to that better start and at Western Michigan University, 2013, 1 and 11. But by 2016, they went 13 and 1, 12 and 0 in conference play and finished with a number 12 ranking. So you know that PJ Fleck, the expectations are very, very high, and they got to get this thing going early here with the Gopher fans in this stadium. And we are underway. The PJ Fleck era in Minnesota has officially started and we will see right away how he and the crew respond the auto owners insurance impact players as we get a look and it's 2-4 Buffalo on the offensive side and then don't forget about Steven Richardson defensively for the Gophers. Yeah, or Tyree Jackson, the next really premier quarterback in the MAC conference according to Coach Fleck. And then you got Jonathan Hawkins who was a backup last year and Steve, Steven Henderson who they call the stove because you can't move him. He is a stove as a play action or fake handoff and then up the middle goes Tyree Jackson. And Tyree Jackson, the quarterback for Buffalo. That's the guy that P.J. Flex says is the next special player to come out of the MAC conference. Yeah, and there's been a bunch of them. You know, we talked uh, the other day, and we talked, started listing all those players that have come out of the MAC that were probably missed recruits, overlooked recruits for the Big Ten conference. He struggled last year, just nine touchdowns, nine interceptions, thrust into the spotlight as a true freshman, but he's poised for a big year. This time he flips it out wide, and that is caught by Jacob Martinez. And he shoved out a few yards shy of the marker. Well, you know, we talked about Steven Richardson, and not the tallest guy in the world, is a defensive tackle for Minnesota. They're going to stun him quite a bit because he's a really effective pass rusher also. Here he goes. He's taken off on third down. Flag comes in. He does pick up the first, but let's see what the laundry's about. As we get our, meet our referee, Greg Sujak, here pretty early. So this one is coming back. It's on the center, James O'Hagan. And it wipes out the first down run by Jackson. And this is a Mid-American Conference officiating crew. It is indeed headed up by Greg Sujak. And Lance Leipold, the head man for Buffalo in his third season, hoping to stem the tide from last year where they went 2-10. and ten. A really disappointing year for the Bulls, but they feel like they've got some pieces to compete better this season as Jackson settles in the pocket, flings this deep, and it is incomplete through the hands of Anthony Johnson. Coverage was there by Keandre Thomas, and it brings up fourth down. Awful good pass protection, and Jackson, I mean, he's standing flat-footed. Look him throw that football, and good coverage. 
Anthony Johnson, redshirt junior, they said they would target him a lot in this game. They went to him there on the deep ball, incomplete. And now an early punt on fourth and 14. Kyle Dewey boots it away. Antonio Chenault waits. And he will take the fair catch just inside the 35. Our auto and own owners insurance impact players on the other side, Play. Coach Mason. You got to start with Rodney Smith. He brings toughness right there. And Nate Waziak, you talk about a mismatch. He's 6'10". And on defense for the for Buffalo, Khalil Hodge, 123 tackles, undisputed leader of the defense. Yeah, they raved about Khalil Hodge. They used to have another Khalil at Buffalo two yeah. years ago. Khalil Mack, most decorated player to ever come out of the Bulls program. Now, of course, in the NFL. A pass on first down complete for 12 yards. And move the sticks. Brandon Lingen, they said they wanted to target their two tight ends, Nate Wozniak and Brandon Lingen. They do so right away. Yeah, we asked the coaching staff what was a surprise. When the running backs, they said the tight ends are really good. Both have the ability to play at the next level. Connor Rhoda getting the start. We will see Demry Croft under center at some point. As the second play goes to one of those talented tailbacks, the redshirt junior Rodney Smith. 17 touchdowns last year for Smith, 16 of them on the ground, and one kick return thrown in there for good measure. Well, Minnesota, like so many teams, no huddle offense. Get out there, get the play from the sideline. They get set. Sometimes they stop and look to the sideline. Sometimes they snap the ball. Look into the sideline to see if the play is the one they want. Second six. And pushing the pile across that big M. Shy of the 45. Chris Ford, the nose tackle, bringing down Rodney Smith. You mentioned he's so good inside the tackle, such a strong runner. They go back to him, but there's nothing there. Nice job defensively by the Bulls, sniffing that out. Khalil Hodge, who we talked about, number four in white, was leading the way, bringing him down. And now it's fourth and three for the Gophers. Hodge was seventh in the nation last year with 123 tackles. And he's got his first of 2017. Santoso trying to pin Buffalo deep. And he will get him down near the 12 yard line as the fair catch is called for and taken. So PJ Fleck hoping to get off to a good start in Minnesota. No score early. Football on BTN is presented to you by Taco Bell's new $1 Beefy Potato Rito. And brought to you by Discover Card. We treat you like you treat you. Back in the Twin Cities on a gorgeous evening. Week one of the college football season. Each team has traded a punt. So now Buffalo will have their second possession. And started from inside their own 15 at the 13. Hand off right side for a couple to Jonathan Hawkins, who's trying to replace 1,000-yard rusher Jordan Johnson from a year ago. Yeah, Carter Coughlin, defensive end, what they call a rush end from the backside. A converted linebacker, great athletic ability, great hustle, tracked him down from behind. Last year used him as mainly a third down pass rusher. This year they're hoping for more out of Coughlin. And a nice tackle there, second and eight. motions in the backfield and gets the football brought down a couple shy of the 20 Jonathan Celestine you'll hear that name a lot this year one of their senior leaders that was really well coached defense right there you saw the back dip inside go outside and when I look for all the defenders still had their shoulders square to the line of scrimmage so they could make the play laterally Celestine, nicknamed the Thumper, because they say he's the hardest hitter on the club. A nice job there to bring up third and five. 
as the noise level rises at TCF Bank Stadium, and it'll rise again because Antoine Winfield Jr. came up to make a great play and bring up fourth down. When we were talking to the coaches about Antoine Whitfield Jr., they said, you know what, amazing thing, he could play so many plays. He could play safety, he could play corner, he could play outside linebacker. He's that type of athlete. He's the son of ex-Vikings cornerback Antoine Winfield Sr. So Buffalo, their offense, which struggled so much last year, two quick punts. This one fielded just inside the 40-yard line. And we're coming upon another break. A little over five minutes gone by in quarter one at TCF Bank Stadium. Philip John, P.J. Fleck, one of several new head coaches this year in the Big Ten Conference. Tom Allen in Indiana taking on Ohio State tonight. And then Jeff Brom trying to turn things around for the Boilermakers of Purdue. But the focus right now is on the Gophers offense and P.J. Fleck. It is still Connor Rhoda out there at quarterback. We expect to see Demry Croft at some point here early on in the game as well. This time the toss out left side is incomplete. He was trying to get the Shannon Brooks out of the backfield. Yeah, they shifted Brooks in the backfield and then sent him out in the flat trying to get a mismatch. There was a linebacker running with him and the throw was a little bit off. But the offense for P.J. Fleck at Western Michigan, a lot of short throws and all about getting your playmakers the football. That's what they were trying to do there on first down, now second and ten. And continuing the theme, as we will see for Minnesota under Fleck, no huddle, checks from the sideline, off play action, over the middle, it's caught. Inside the 35, inside the 20, and all the way to the end zone, Tyler Johnson. Rhoda to Johnson. Minnesota leads it. And the extra point up and good from Evan Carpenter, last year's Big Ten kicker of the year. 61 yards, 61 seconds on that drive. Well, you know, Tyler Johnson, Minneapolis North, the local guy, they've been high on him. High energy, baby. The seven nothing Gophers. So. PJ Flex crew has the lead seven nothing and they did it on a very quick two play drive. A 61 yard strike from that man, Connor Rhoda. So one of the up and coming stars, Tyler Johnson. Tyler Johnson, a guy who really caught P.J. Fleck's attention in camp. One of those kids who was a high school quarterback, a great athlete, and they thought he could fill a void at receiver, and it looks like he might fill a void at receiver. Yeah, well, they've been high on him. You know, back going in the spring, he thought Rashad still would be his best guy, and then he still has hope for him, but, man, Tyler Johnson has really come on. Through the back of the end zone. Well, here's a real basic play, but the results are great. Watch the play action out of the backfield to hold the linebacker, and you'll see true freshman Demetrius Douglas. He'll clear out the middle, and here comes the square, and Tyler Johnson throws a little bit high. Nice catch in his hands. Missed tackle. Six points. And the celebration. 
Tyler Johnson last year as a freshman only had 141 yards receiving. He already has 61 here in 2017. So now Buffalo will try to dig out of an early hole. Rush comes and Jackson had to get rid of it. Incomplete. Celestine was coming in this and as was Kamal Martin coming in there bringing the pressure. Yeah, they're very fortunate there. Jackson had no chance. The rush was on. He was off balance and he threw the ball just away. Very easily could have been intercepted. Completion percentage for Jackson last year was a big time problem for Buffalo just 53 percent but they said certainly that wasn't all on his shoulders. They had issues offensively last year. This time he's going to try to use his legs. And they'll mark him down around the 31. The safety Kunle Ayende coming up to make the stop. And let's not forget Tyree Jackson. He's 6'7", 245 pounds. When you let that guy get north and south running the football, he's a load. Also runs a 4.5740. So with that size and speed and the cannon of an arm that he has, you have to think if he can put together a solid sophomore year, some teams at the next level might start to take notice. That's a nice pass and a first down. Really nice connection to Tyler Mabry, the tight end. Yeah, you know, that that was just a well-executed play. It was good defense. They were all over him. He put that ball right on the money. Nice catch by the receiver. We know Minnesota likes to go fast. Buffalo does it, too, at times. As a quick pitch and catch out this time. Anthony Johnson with a reception. See, that's what I call gimme throws. If you get a certain look where a corner's playing soft, you run a little five-yard out, and if the ball is thrown on time, you can't stop it. Six-yard gain on first down, second and four. This time looking for a little bit of a bigger play, and he's got Johnson again. So Buffalo getting into a rhythm. And they are going up tempo here, Coach Mason. Yeah, they've, they've got the Gophers back on their heels right now. Inside the Minnesota 40, a sweep this time. Jonathan Hawkins getting the carry, and Thomas Barber making the tackle. Yeah, you talk about Thomas Barber. Another guy that leads Maroon and Gold. Dan played here, his brother played here, his other brother played here, now he's here. His father actually spoke to the Minnesota team in the locker room before the game. Defensively, Kunle Allende making the play. You know, PJ made me feel old the other day. He says, well, Thomas Barber, he says, I know you recruited his, his two brothers. I said, yeah, well, let me tell you, I tried to recruit his father, too. <laughs> <laughs> Glenn Mason with me, and you were here 10 years as the head coach in Minnesota. P.J. Fleck is the fourth head coach in the 10 years since you departed, so they are hoping to get back to the consistency at that spot that they had many years ago. Third down at seven. Over the middle, cutting in and catching it on the hash marks and picking up the first down. Nice job hauling that in by Antonio Nunn. First catch of the career for the redshirt freshman. Yeah, B Buffalo's passing attack right now is right on time. Time throws. That ball is out of the quarterback's hand as the receiver's making the cut. On the ground, Emmanuel Reed gets his first touch. He's the change of pace back for Jonathan Hawkins. Stopped by Antoine Whitfield, Jr. Once again, Kunle Allende on the coverage. Zach Lefebvre, the tight end, was the intended target of Tyree Jackson. You know, when you're doing those quick passes like Buffalo's been doing, the closer that you get to the goal line, you get in the red zone, the tougher it is because the defense doesn't have to worry about the deep throw. They can start squeezing those short throws. Third down for Buffalo, down 7 nothing. A little over midway through the first quarter. Jackson from the empty backfield launches it for the end zone. Incomplete. Trying to find K.J. Osborne. 
Zoe Creighton was with him step for step all the way toward the pile off. And on fourth and seven, they'll try a field goal. Could not quite haul it in, even if he could. Would have been out of bounds. Now a 40-yard kick is on the way, and that is no good. Three offensive possessions for Buffalo, and no points to show. Lance Leipold frustrated that his Bulls still have a goose egg next to their name. Seven nothing Minnesota just inside of seven minutes left in the first quarter. Saturday, BTN, FS1, and Fox Sports deliver a full slate of football, including Acker, Wadley, and Iowa taking on top, prospect, pro, top pro prospect Josh Allen in Wyoming. Plus, in prime time, catch Jeff Brom's Purdue debut against number 16, Louisville, well, Saturday on BTN, FS1, and Fox. As the go for possession starts off with a carry by Smith and a tackle by Khalil Hodge. No surprise. Running Smith inside, and you know, you just don't give up on something. He's that dangerous a weapon. You keep hammering away because sooner or later he's going to break one. The 16 rushing touchdowns last year for Rodney Smith. And this time, another handoff. It's going to bring up a third down and medium for the Gophers. What's your assessment so far of what P.J. Fleck has done on offense? Well, you know, I always look for the first game because in college football, there's no exhibition game. They're sharp. They're getting lined up. No false starts. Good communication. Good execution by the quarterback and receivers. And it's still Connor Rhoda. Again, P.J. Fleck and his offensive coordinator, Kirk Chiracca, said we will see Denver Croft at some point. Pressure comes, and the third down throw is batted in the air and falls down incomplete. The crowd here at TCF Bank Stadium pleading for interference by Devin Russell on Demetrius Douglas, but they will not get the call, and Minnesota will punt. Yeah, it was tight coverage. He's under pressure, and it's a it's a good throw. And you know, if you're the receiver coach, you say, man, you got to catch those. You know, the ones when you're wide open, if you, you catch it, you hands touch it, you got to pull it in. Ryan Santoso sends it to Martinez, a good punt. Martinez trying to get around the edge, and he's able to sneak out close to the 30 before he's shoved out in front of his own teammates. We talked about P.J. Fleck and all the energy that he has. <laughs> Some signs of it from last year in Western Michigan. Yeah, well, he's got a lot of energy. He can run fast, too. You know, I, on my best day, I couldn't have run that fast downhill. <laughs> I tell you one thing tonight. Both these teams, Buffalo and Minnesota, they got big-time punters. Spirals high, hanging far. I'm impressed. Two-time Mac Coach of the Year, of course, last year started out undefeated, going to the Cotton Bowl before falling to Wisconsin, and then rowing his boat west. So Buffalo, their fourth offensive possession, starts with a keeper for the sophomore Tyree Jackson. But yeah, some punts on both sides that have been impressive. Buffalo hoping to use their punter a little less going forward. Last year, Coach Mason, only 16 and a half points a game. They really struggled to get anything going offensively. You only score 16 points in offense. You better play great, great defense, and they didn't. That's why they only won two football games. Two and 10 last year. A deep ball. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, the shoulder catch. Tyree Jackson lofted it in there perfectly, and Anthony Johnson reels it in, and just like that, Buffalo's in the red zone. Yeah, and Thomas got up and looked like he caught that, you know? I mean, that was a perfectly thrown ball deep. He threw it off the outside. Only the receiver could catch it, but he gave him room to catch the football. And here we go. No rest for the weary. Buffalo sprints up, gets ready, and they're throwing again. And it's right back to Johnson for the touchdown. So Minnesota had Tyler Johnson catch a touchdown pass, and now Anthony Johnson 
gets the equalizer for the Bulls of Buffalo. A couple of nice back to back throws. You think? I mean, again, I watch him throw the football, Tyree Jackson. You saw he was really off balance. He didn't even have good form there, but he put the ball right on the money. Then he came back with a touch pass for a touchdown. who missed a field goal earlier on the last drive converts there to not us up at seven apiece. So Buffalo getting the answer, the equalizer. Anthony Johnson, five catches, 88 yards. The touchdown grab a moment ago to tie things up at seven. And Minnesota to start this one. A little shallow in the secondary. Duke McGee, who had a targeting penalty in the second half of their bowl game, he's out. Of course, a few players dismissed from the team at the end of last year. Yeah, lack of depth. And they'll get McGee back the second half of this game, but the guys that were dismissed, they're gone. And it did carry over into this year for McGee, but as you said, he'll be back for the second half. A little lane here. And out across the 35 that time goes Shannon Brooks. Oh, yeah, he does kick returns, too. He's dynamic in a lot of different phases of the game. Watch Tyree Jackson here. I mean, he puts that ball right on the money. You know, they, they got press coverage, tight coverage right there, but you can't let the receiver get on top of you. I'm talking about Minnesota. You can't let the Buffalo receiver get on top of you, and that's why it was a touchdown. And there's Dimry Croft. So we saw Connor Rhoda for the first few series. And now the redshirt sophomore from Rockford, Illinois, takes over. Both Rhoda and Croft coming into this season. 17 career passes. He's more athletic. He has the ability to do things like this and take off with his legs. And he gets across the 40 to the 41. Yeah, the scouting report on the difference between Rhoda and Croft is exactly what you're talking about. Croft, number 11, has got some wheels. He can really do it. If he, if he enable him to turn the corner, he can do some damage. He redshirted last year because Connor Rhoda was the backup of Mitch Leidner, who's actually in uniform tonight across town for the Minnesota Vikings in their final preseason game. Setting up, throwing one, and completing it out to Carter, front ice first down into Buffalo territory. Both sides being pretty proficient in the passing game. Yeah, well executed play. You got to credit the offensive line there. When you talk about the fake and looking one side and having time to come all the way back and throw a touch past the other side, you need a lot of time to do that. So Demery Cross showed the legs, showed the arm. Here he flips it out to the left side to Demetrius Douglas. And Douglas that time gets six yards. His dad, Omar Douglas, was a gopher, played here. There is good pace on both sides offensively. Not a lot of wasted time between snaps as Shannon Brooks is going to be shy of the marker to bring up third down. Well, could you imagine P.J. Fleck having an offense that was slow no. pace? <laughs> that wouldn't fit at all. The third down run, Brooks fighting. And he got it with that second effort. First down, Minnesota. But it's got to be tough as the game wears on on both defenses, I would imagine. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the thing about it, the, the pace, you think when both teams are out there, the pace is always tougher on the defense because they don't know what's coming. Especially the defense alignment. If you don't have depth there and you can't substitute, you just get worn out. P.J. Flex, Western Michigan team last year, one of the most explosive offenses in the country. And this time it's not Brooks, it's Rodney Smith. If it's not one, it's the other, and he takes it into the red zone before he's brought down by the corner, Cam Lewis. I've been asked many times, how many running backs do you need to be effective? I used to say a pair and a spare. Two's not enough. <laughs> you need a spare, because if you're going to run a lot, of, a lot of times like these guys, there sooner or later one's going to get dinged up, you need another guy in there. Second three, they go back to him. 
And he's got the first down, does Rodney Smith. And in the meeting yesterday with offensive coordinator Kirk Shiraki, you guys were saying, would you rather have an offensive lineman or a running back? It was unanimous. You'd rather have a good running back than a good offensive lineman. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it because I don't care how good an offensive tackle is, he can only block one man on one play. A great running back, he can take care of three suckers on every play. And Smith and Brooks, they can certainly make men miss. Fresh set of downs. Smith inside the 10. Khalil Hodge with another tackle for Buffalo. There's the tandem. A lot of people are going to be on lookout for this pair this, se this season, that's for sure. Well, you see third team all Big Ten, Rodney Smith. That's only because we got a lot of good running backs in this league. And Brooks's numbers would have been more impressive last year, but he missed the first few games with a broken foot. Up the middle, diving. Did he get in? They're going to say just short. Shannon Brooks brought down just before the chalk. And that's It is enough for the first down. Well, they might take another look at that. And that's just what Greg Sujak, our referee, will do. He'll talk to replay official Tom Fiedler. Does it appear that Shannon Brooks may have gotten in? You know what's really been impressive so far by these running backs from Minnesota is their ball protection. Early in the year, and you know, PJ flexes, they don't go live much in practice, and that's one of the things that really worries your running backs. If you haven't been hit a lot, will you protect the football? Let's see here. Looks to me like he got in. When his elbow's down, he's down. Where's the ball? What do you think? I don't, I'm not sure there's enough to overturn it. That's what I think. Not down there because the hand hit the ground and not yeah. the elbow. But the elbow and the other one. Right there, he's down as he tucked and turned. As Minnesota's trying to regain the lead here late in the first quarter. Well, our, our replay guru, Dick Honig, he never agrees with me, so I don't I don't know. Speaking of Dick Honig, let's bring him in. Dick, what did you see? What do you think? Well, I think, Glenn, you had it right. It's just the position of the ball when his elbow touches, and it's really hard to see. You don't have a down-the-line look, so it makes it very difficult to overturn that call. But, it's again, it's very, very close. It could go either way. You said he never agrees with you. He yeah. just agreed with you. Well, you know, there's a first for everything. <laughs> you know, it's a, this might be a great football season, Honig. You're finally on the same page as me. <laughs> I love that guy. Well, they are taking a few looks at this. Great baseball player at the University of Michigan. Did you know that? Dick Honig? Oh, yeah. Yeah. A man of many talents, and we appreciate his efforts back with us in, in the studio in Chicago. I never knew that, and then one day he sat down and told me about his whole career. That's Boy, it. it's close. Yeah. Dick, on that slow-mo look, are you getting a clear picture and you want to make more of a decisive call you one way or the other? Long, you got you got to let it stand. Well, they're hoping this year to speed up the pace of play in college football, but this has been a long replay. It was tough to tell for Greg Sujak. Here we go. Confirmed and just shy of the goal line. They had eight ticks, so 49 seconds remaining in the first quarter. But PJ Fleck probably not too upset. He only has about six inches to go to get in the end zone. Yeah, well, I'm gonna tell you something. 
It's not in till it's in, baby. <laughs> yeah. How many times you see something like that happen? The next play, someone fumbles the ball, and you think, you got to be kidding me. I don't want to jinx him or anything, but. Dangerous combination in the backfield with Croft, the quarterback who can run, and Brooks flanking him on his right. It's Brooks. This time, no question about it. Touchdown, Minnesota. Touchdown drive, and then backup quarterback Dimry Croft takes Minnesota down the field and puts him back in front. Emmett Carpenter for the point after. 14 to 7. Handing to Brooks, the talented junior getting into the end zone. And Minnesota up one touchdown late first quarter. Thank you. 14 to 7 Gophers. They had a touchdown pass through the air and then one on the ground by Brooks. There's the two quarterbacks sitting side by side. And the coach has told us that you would see Rhoda for a few series and then Dimry Croft. So far, it's gone according to how they scripted it. Well, we know the energy from P.J. Fleck. We felt it up here in the booth. I'm curious, Kendra, down on the sideline, what has it felt like? Well, first of all, it's hard to keep track of him. I have to peek all the way around the corner here to even see where he's at. He's like a little kid. He bounces from huddle to huddle to huddle, never staying in one spot for more than about three seconds. And when the officials were reviewing that play, he snuck in behind them and was looking at the same video monitor, raised his arm, signaling touchdown before another official stepped in to block his view. So high energy. It's like watching a toddler bounce around from thing to thing, but absolutely high energy. And it's clearly trickling into the stands up here. Well, what's interesting is he said he rarely drinks coffee. It's pretty much all natural. That's almost scary. Because he's good. He's a guy that just shoots out of bed at 5 in the morning. Thank goodness he doesn't drink coffee. <laughs> wow. Yeah, what would he be like if he did that? His wife, Heather, said he's so competitive. He said she's competitive, too. When they make their bed in the morning, they'll have a competition to see who can make it more cleaner on that side. Now, wait a minute. He says he gets out of bed at 5.30 in the morning. You think she's getting up at the same time? <laughs> I'm not buying that. Well, she's got to have the energy to keep up with him, I'm right? I'm not buying that. This might be the last play of the first quarter. After a seven-yard pass, Jackson back in the gun. Giving it to Hawkins, looking for space right side, and he will have the first. You know, when you talk about Buffalo, they only won two football games last year. But let's not forget, you mentioned his name before, Lance Leipold, the, the head football coach. He went there from Wisconsin Whitewater. 109 and 6 was his record. Man can coach. And that man, P.J. Fleck, he can coach as well. After one quarter of action, he's got Minnesota up 14 to 7 in the opener of the 2017 season. We're one Minnesota. And when you're starting to see how this whole thing can really work in this whole Twin Cities area, that's what we're talking about. But our fans were unbelievable today. That's the best college football environment I've ever played in as a head football coach. So I want to go deep to Bateman. He's up there. visiting redcross.org or text the word Harvey to 90999. By doing that, you make a $10 donation and your donation that enables the Red Cross to prepare for, respond to, and help people recover from this disaster.
And every bit helps, and it has been a disaster. Certainly our thoughts with the people of Texas and all that they've gone through. As the first play of the second quarter is a pass out to the favorite target of Tyree Jackson, Anthony Johnson. Yeah, I go back again. I'm being redundant, but those gimme throws, these guys are pretty good on it. It, it goes to just the receiver going to a spot, and Tyree Jackson has a strong arm and very accurate. They said he does have a cannon of an arm, and we have seen it on display. Just a young sophomore from Norton Shores, Michigan. And they're going to do a reversal, and then they flip it back to Jackson. There's that big arm, but it's incomplete. Antoine Winfield was back there on the coverage. K.J. Osborne couldn't haul it in. You know, as my call or my call was, he was playing America's famous game of being wide open. And he was wide open for a while, and Winfield recovered, and the ball was underthrown. But, man, they had him fooled for a long time. Any fault on Tyree Jackson there? Well, just the nature of the play. He had to get set, and he had to throw the football, and he had to square his shoulders back up and throw back across the field. And now they face a third and six, and we get whistles before the snap as the flag comes in. And a very unhappy Lance Leipold. And you were mentioning it before the quarter end, but to reiterate the point, at Wisconsin Whitewater Division Three school where he coached for eight years, he was 109 and six. He won six Division Three yeah. titles. Yeah, I, I asked him, why did you leave? Yeah. Yeah. Come on, 109 and six? Man. He said he was ready for a new challenge, crossed over the 50-year-old threshold, thought this was his opportunity. And this pass is nearly intercepted. Also hoping to get an interference penalty. Jacob Martinez, the intended target, but he did not get the flag. Jonathan Celestine was bringing pressure on Jackson, and it all results in an incompletion. Well, you know, defensive pass interference, uh, I'm not saying that should have been pass interference, but to me, that's the most inconsistent call in college football. And... Uh, Sometimes you see a play like that flag, sometimes you don't. I don't personally think it was pass interference. I'm not saying that. Uncatchable ball, whatever you want to call it. But there, was, there, but there was contact. Yeah, there was contact between he and the safety, Jacob Huff. As Antonio Chenault waits deep, this punt is a low liner. A chance for Chenault. But a nice special teams tackle that time by K.J. Osborne. And our score remains the same. Lance Leipold frustrated on the sideline. Third season for Lance Leipold and that record. That is not a typo, 109 and six. Yeah, and I was kidding. I asked him why he left. I knew what he was gonna say. He really accomplished a lot there. He wanted the challenge. He's a competitor to turn something around and. Not many people, if any, have won big time at Buffalo. And he mentioned he grew up 15 miles from Wisconsin Whitewater where he coached. He actually was also a grad assistant under Barry Alvarez at Wisconsin in the early 90s, way back. As that pass is incomplete, Eric Carter tried to go down to the ground and wrangle it in, but he could not. Interesting that Leipold also mentioned, as Demry Croft is back out there for his second series, that it's just a tough transition coming from D3 to D1. He said the X's and O's not so much, but he, it's just such a different game, a faster game, a more competitive game, and the guys are bigger, faster, stronger, and that's been an adjustment for him. He's going to keep it, is Demry Croft. Again, that's what you get the option to do with him more than Connor Rhoda, those RPOs, and that time Croft gets a couple yards. Well, you know, getting back to it, I mentioned it before, talking about the Gophers and P.J. Fleck. Same thing to say Buffalo. You know, we're, we're only a little bit more than a quarter into this game, but both teams well coached, minimal mistakes. Western Michigan hardly ever made a mistake on offense last year. They led the country with just eight turnovers. 
And their motto was, the ball is the program. And that is one of the mottos, along with row the boat, that he has brought to Minneapolis. And it's been a clean game so far on both sides with no turnovers. Nice job, Tyler Johnson, who had the touchdown catch earlier, toe-tapping the sideline, first down. Yeah, you know, you, you look at Demery Coffey, got out of the pocket, there wasn't any contain, he kept his eyes downfield, and as you mentioned, Tyler Johnson just tiptoed right on the sideline, first down. From the 40. This time the handoff to Rodney Smith making one miss. And he'll get about seven, maybe eight out of that. Flag does come in on the play. See number four come in there and yeah, it looked like his left hand got it. And looked like it was in a slip off and then he grabbed the top of the face mask. Good call by the officials. So move the ball all the way inside the 40 to the 38. Minnesota tries to sneak closer and closer to grabbing a two-score lead. That time a two-yard run before Jarrett Franklin makes the tackle on Rodney Smith. And here they go quickly to the line this time. Very quickly. Trying to catch Buffalo sleeping, but they didn't do so. Just one yard on that run. That was pre-designed. You know, they knew that that was like two plays called in the huddle. They ran the first play, came right back. No chance to communicate. They knew the play they were going to run, but it, it just didn't work. And because of that, it brings up a third down at seven. From this spot, it would be about a 52, 53-yard field goal for Emmett Carpenter, right on the edge of his range. Trying to get a little closer. That would make it about a 50-yard field goal after that run by Shannon Brooks if they wanted to try it. And it appears they do want to try it. Well, he's got a 53-yarder and a 52-yarder in his career. Great kicker, nicer young man. And he's had an opportunity to visit with him sometimes. Really, really impressive. Impressive in person and impressive with that right leg. But this time it is off the mark. So no good by Emmett Carpenter. Who was 22 of 24 field goals last year, but can't connect there from long distance. Look at that future gopher. How cute is that? <laughs> you know what? That's about what Thomas Barber looked like when I offered him a scholarship. <laughs> I'm telling you. I was in there, I already had Marion on the team. I was recruiting Dom, and Thomas was there, and I said, Thomas, I'm offering you a scholarship, but I'm going to tell you, you're going to play with your hand on the ground. Well, I, I was wrong. He's not a running back or defensive back. He's just one heck of a linebacker. Well, the Marion that you were referencing, as that one is tipped, and is it intercepted? No, they come in and say incomplete. The pass from Jackson was tipped at the line. And Thomas Barber claiming he picked it clean, but they say no. Let's see. Well, that's a tough angle to tell from. From that angle, it looked like an interception, but that's... You can't see if he lost it on the ground. Speaking of the devil, weren't we just talking about Thomas Barber? We Called were. his number, I mean. Yeah, many people remember the recent Marion Barber, the younger generation who was a good running back in the NFL, but that was Marion the third, Marion Jr., also a good NFL running back. So some nice lineage in the Barber family. 
Yeah. Just just to just to set the record straight, I was not the head coach of Minnesota when I was recruiting the dad. I was an assistant coach at the University of Illinois. That's a forward look at it. Let's look at it. This is the one that's tougher to tell. See, he's got it, but you, you can't can tell, tell if he controlled it the whole way. And they just said the ruling on the field's going to stand. Which means they couldn't tell either. Confirmed, they would have said without a doubt. So the way it was called on the field, and Tom is not very happy, and Dad's not happy, his mom Karen's not happy, and <laughs> Coach Fleck's not happy. But Barber, the sophomore, beat out a redshirt senior, Cody Polk, for the starting spot. Certainly a bright future. A near interception there, second and 10. And this time the Bulls will go to the ground and pick up a couple with Jonathan Hawkins. You know, you got to credit the dad, too. Marion Jr., he came back and got his degree from the University of Minnesota after all those years, and he should be applauded for that. And the university should be applauded, too, for making those type of things possible. Absolutely. And the coaches just raved about Thomas Barber that's on the field, the linebacker, and what a great family he comes from. And over the middle complete, Anthony Johnson has it. First down, nice connection. He takes it out to midfield. So if your last name's Johnson in this game, you've done a good job yeah. catching the football. Yeah, there's a lot of Johnsons out here. Came with the blitz, receiver was wide open. Pocket clean, and Jackson goes back to number 83. You like, you like Tyree Jackson? Yeah, I do. I, I, I'm impressed so the, far. I tell you, the scouting report we got from P.J. Fleck, pretty accurate. Said the next special player to come out of the back is Tyree Jackson. That one deflected again at the line. So some disruption coming in that time. Celestine and Gary Moore, number 19 there. Yes, yeah, sometimes I... I'd like to ask P.J., Young man's from Michigan. He was at Western Michigan. How do you let him get away to Buffalo? The favorite target, Anthony Johnson. Juco transfer from Iowa Western. And his first game as a Buffalo Bull has been a success, no doubt. Faking the handoff, Jackson only got tripped up. But still able to pick up the first down. Antoine Winfield Jr. with the tackle. Jackson and company moving quickly. And running it off the right side as we are inside of nine and a half minutes to go in the second quarter, 14 to seven, Minnesota at TCF Bank Stadium. But Buffalo's offense, which was just a sore spot for them last year, has looked better. Some encouraging signs for Lance Leipold and offensive coordinator Andy Kotelnicki. Oh, this time Johnson looking like he wants to throw it. For the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Kamadi Holsey. Keandre Thomas, he was there with him step for step. But a flag is, there, is down back near the line of scrimmage. the passer on Kamal Martin and even though it wasn't a touchdown it will be a first down I think that's questionable I mean uh, I know if I was Pichek I, I wouldn't be very happy on that you got to play to the whistle it wasn't blatant wasn't a vicious hit I don't know about that one we know how cautious they are, especially with guys throwing the ball, even though that wasn't the quarterback. He was the quarterback on that play, taking a hit from behind. Hand off up the middle, down to the 12, goes Jonathan Hawkins. 
And Minnesota, they've practiced being cleaner tacklers this year because they had eight targeting penalties last year. That was most of the Big Ten. Yeah, they had an inordinate number last year, and they, you know, really hurt them not only in penalties, they players get thrown out of the game. I think coaches across the country are doing a fabulous job of, you know, coaching and protecting the players and adhering to this rule. And P.J. Fleck and his staff, they held a tackling seminar to try to get these guys on the same page. As Jackson rolls to the right, tucks, and he's going to go down. Antoine Winfield, the sophomore from the Woodlands, Texas, coming up and making a play. Yeah, that, that run pass option, you can see Tyree Jackson, even though he's running lateral, he was half thinking about he had a lead blocker out there going downfield or maybe throwing the football. Third down and eight. It was 7 0 and 7 7. Now 14 7. Buffalo trying to even things up once more. Jackson from the gun. Minnesota breaks five. And incomplete. Jacob Martinez. That's who he was trying to get it to, but the coverage draped on him was so great in the corner. Yeah, so Creighton, number 14, was all over that. They had no chance. If that ball would have been better thrown, it would have been picked off. And you can see right there, no chance. For you young guys out there, you see Zoe Creighton, he's on it, and he looked back for the ball. That's really important. Adam Mitchison missed a 40-yard kick earlier. This one from 33. Blocked. And it's blocked. Yeah, that ball was really kicked low. Defense against the score is the most important thing. Let's watch it right here. Good step, good hold, and that ball didn't get up at all. Winfield snuck in there, got the left hand, and knocked it down, preventing the three points. So two missed field goals now for Buffalo. And flags before the snap. A frustrated Lance Leipold. I wonder what P.J. Fleck looked like after that block kick. I'm guessing that he was pretty excited. Well, Again, he gets the hand up, low kick, and there you go. <laughs> Don't get hurt now, Coach. You know, you know what I didn't ask him that I meant to is what he does for a workout. Or <laughs> does he even need to work out? I guess his workout is 24 hours a day. He's always moving. Swinging it out right side. His, his, his workout's taking a nap. That's what that is. <laughs> <laughs> so he's the opposite of everybody else, right? Yeah. Short catch there for Demetrius Douglas. He wears that tie, by the way, paying homage to two guys that he worked for, ex-49er coach Mike Nolan, and then Jim Tressel. He was a GA at Ohio State under Jim Tressel, and he wears that tie in homage to those two guys who, he says, played such an instrumental part in his career. Pressure comes, and flipping it out right side, and that is caught for a first down, brought in by Tyler Johnson. As Connor Rota able to locate him. Yeah, this is not a clean play. It's a broken play. But what impresses me here is that, and really both quarterbacks have showed it, is poise under pressure. All right, so we've seen Rota. We've seen Croft. Now we are back to Connor Rota. And they said that it would be like this. Both guys coming into this game, 17 career passes. And the quarterback battle was the story of camp. Who would start? Who would get more snaps? Rhoda throwing. Nice ball there. Complete out to midfield. Right back to Tyler Johnson. Man, you can see why they're excited about Tyler Johnson. 
I mean, if his fingers touch the ball, he's going to catch it. And, uh, that's great. He catches it, he puts it away, and immediately turns toward the goal line. Last year, they had Drew Waldatarski, who led them with 66 receptions. Nobody else had more than 20 catches, so they were worried. Who would fill in at wide receiver? They told us, as you just said, Tyler Johnson would help, and he certainly has. He had the 61-yard touchdown grab earlier and a couple of receptions here on this drive as Shannon Brooks gets the first down carry. Yeah, they don't have the depth they want at receiver, but obviously they feel good about Johnson. They rave about Demetrius Douglas, the true freshman. He's still high on Rashad Still, the, you know, the, the bigger receiver, the 6'5 guy from El Paso, Texas. So in time, I think they're going to be very good at wide receiver. Into the camp, they thought that Rashad Still might be the go-to guy. You mentioned he's 6'5". He had 18 catches last year. They thought he might be poised for a breakout year. But he did not have the camp that they were hoping for. And we've yet to call his name out here tonight. I'm waiting for him to throw the ball to that 6'10 tight end. He was just on your screen, Nate Wozniak. <laughs> Tallest skill player in FBS football, as you might imagine. 6'10. Richard Patino might be saying, hey, can we borrow him during the basketball season? Third down and six is Connor Rhoda instructing the offensive line before backing up into the gun. Plants fires first down. Guess who? Tyler Johnson. Well, Buffalo went to a three-man defensive line and then stunned off of that. Credit the offensive line coached by Ed Warner, who's been a very veteran offensive line coach, came to Minnesota from Ohio State. Well coached. He didn't have most of those guys even during spring practice because of injuries. They look awful good tonight. Ed Warner is certainly going to be an instrumental part, as you said, of the offensive line and overseeing the run game as well in conjunction with Kirk Shiraka, the offensive coordinator. On the ground, just past the 30 for Rodney Smith. And Buffalo was telling us it's an interesting prep because you had a new system to learn and you also had Ed Warner coming over. Defensive coordinator Rob Smith coming from Arkansas now at the helm of the Arkansas defense. So they had to watch a lot of different game film to try to piece together what they were going to do to face Minnesota. Yeah, he threw that ball behind the receiver. We're fortunate it wasn't a ricochet interception. Rhoda and Croft, that's what we've seen so far from those guys. Just 37 yards for Croft, but obviously very efficient when he was in there. What have you, what have you seen? What do you think so far between the two? I, I think both guys have played well tonight. You know, I, I think, I believe that P.J. is right. Don't don't make a snap decision. You got this whole game and. Over the middle, back to Tyler Johnson, first down. Well, one thing seems to be for sure. Tyler Johnson is the go-to wideout. Yeah, the, the young guy from Minneapolis North, he's impressive. The Gophers, quick to snap it. And the handoff to Rodney Smith. He'll eat down to the eight. And, and you know, we don't want to, P.J. doesn't want to compare this year to last year. You know, last year, last, the last couple of years, Minnesota ran the ball really effectively. They left a lot to be desired throwing the football. There was no consistency. They had they had the ability. They'd make a good play, and then they'd miss a couple guys wide open. Much improved passing football team tonight over last year. But the last six seasons, Five of them, they've been outside of the top 100 in FBS football in passing yards per game, to your point. But they've looked a little sharper here tonight as Khalil Hodge is able to wrap Rodney Smith up and bring him down near the five. Well, here's a big play for Buffalo. You got third down here, and you know, if you can hold them to a field goal attempt, 
you've done your job defensively. You sure don't want to give up a touchdown under two minutes before the half. Redshirt senior Connor Rhoda. And a timeout's going to be taken by the Gophers. P.J. Fleck wants to talk it over. Minnesota knocking on the door because of Tyler Johnson. Four catches on this drive. Yeah, we, we saw Rhoda right there. Calm under pressure, and then he puts the ball right on the money, right in front of the receiver, and a little mix-up on Buffalo's defense. Again, they find Johnson, and pretty good protection, and he puts the ball. I just like how he snatches the ball right out of the air. That's what you want to do. You think they go to him here on third down? I would. You see him there on the right side of your screen, up on the line of scrimmage, number six. 141 yards receiving tonight and a touchdown. They're not going his way. And the pass is intercepted. Critical mistake. Cam Lewis, who did not have any interceptions last year, picks that one off in the end zone. And Minnesota fails to add on to their 14-7 lead. Yeah, here's a critical mistake. He split the tight end out, 6-5, Brandon Lignan, and you underthrow the ball. And Cam Lewis picks it off on the underthrow. First turnover for either team. And now Buffalo at the end of the second quarter. Here with just 90 seconds left, we'll try to make some noise down 14-7. Coming up, it is our Buffalo Wild Wings halftime report with Rick Pizzo and Howard Griffith back in our Chicago studio. Well, the pace that Buffalo's going right now, they're trying to milk time off the clock. They feel very fortunate they intercepted that ball. I think they'd be very content to go into the locker room down 14-7 coming off that 2 and 10 season and really not much expectation for this crew this year. Slipping through the line but unable to make the second man miss Emmanuel Reed as he's brought down by Antonio Chenault grabbing him by the ankles. So now the strategy if you're if you're Minnesota if you stop him here you'll probably use a timeout to try to block the punt or return the punt. You don't use it earlier because as you saw, they're moving the football. You don't want to give them time to go down. We saw Minnesota block a field goal earlier in this second quarter. Third down and one. And Jackson's going to keep it. But he has nowhere to go. Brought down behind the line, and the clock will stop with 14 seconds left. Thomas Barber, who's been instrumental on defense for Minnesota, making the stop. So Minnesota taking the timeout with 14 ticks remaining. And as you said, Coach Mason, they will hope to get a punt block here or a nice return. Yeah, I mean, the, the two things that you look at there because, uh, you know, they're pretty historically, Minnesota's been very dangerous in the, in the kicking game, and they've got good guys returning the ball. So it's all what you think or. You know, later in the year, you have a scouting report on how you think somebody blocks a punt. Sometimes you give a match, look like you're coming after it, and then you don't get good coverage, and you go for the return. But I think now they switch teams. And Kyle DeWine, the punter, rushes out there and gets set. Fourteen to seven, Minnesota. Maybe not how many here at TCF Bank Stadium and hope this first half would go. Now, if you're Buffalo, you can need a good snap, good protection, and don't forget the punter's got to catch the snap. You know, and then get it off. And Greg Sujak taking a personal time out here.
And now Buffalo will take a timeout. So there was the pause by Sujak, and Buffalo takes a timeout. And we will step aside quickly as well. Two seconds have been added to the clock, and referee Greg Sujak wanted to announce that to the crowd, but his mic wasn't working, and then Buffalo took a timeout, so that's what happened there. Now Kyle DeWean gets ready to punt it away to Antonio Chennault. Boy, they almost got in there. And Chennault will call for the fair catch around the 24. Halftime report presented by Buffalo Wild Wings. Rick Pizzo, Howard Griffith standing by. Kinder D. St. Aubin will track down P.J. Fleck for his thoughts in just 10 seconds as well as he heads to the tunnel. He's taking off the headset as Connor Rhoda is just going to go down to a knee and end this first half. Sometimes the crowd doesn't like it like that, but that's exactly the right decision for P.J. Fleck to do. Both sides move quickly on offense. Saw some great plays on defense. It all culminates in a 14-7 score for the first two quarters of the P.J. Fleck era. And now let's go to Kendra with Coach Fleck. Well, Coach, a pretty mistake-free first half of football there, minus the pick in the end zone. What's your assessment of your team on both sides of the ball? Well, we've got to keep changing our best and get better. You know, we got to be able to finish those drives, got to be able to make our field goals. But I'm impressed with the composure of our football team, with how young we are and inexperienced we are. I'm really proud of the, the poise they have. But we got to make more plays. Uh, defensively, we're doing okay. We just got to make a play on defense eventually here. And lastly, for the most part, your two quarterbacks making this a tough decision for you going forward. Well, we're going to stay with our plan. Great. So the first two corners are rowing the boat. We did see the two quarterbacks, Rhoda and Croft. Minnesota, big challenge though. Buffalo right there, pretty much stride for stride. 14 7 at intermission. fans and time for music from our University of Minnesota marching band. I want to encourage all fans to stay in their seats and support the elite pride of Minnesota each and every pregame and halftime this season. Let's row together as one team. Please join me in welcoming your University of Minnesota marching band as they perform a world premiere written by University of Minnesota's very own Professor Dean Sorensen. Here is Row the Boat. The oars are the energy you bring to your life. They symbolize strength, and just as they propel a boat forward, they help move you through life. To symbolize the energy of the oars, here is Rocky's iconic theme, Gonna Fly Now!
The boat is the sacrifice challenging you to ask what you are willing to give up. The more you sacrifice or love, the stronger your boat will become. This is Santana's Soul Sacrifice. The compass defines your direction, which is set by the people you surround yourself with. The direction is set by the leader, the leader of your family, your team, or your organization. We follow our compass with sticks and come sail away. Row the boat means to never give up as we use our oars to power our boat, sacrificing together as we move with purpose toward the direction we set with our compass. Keep rowing with us as we close with Proud Mary.
Now, now please, please rise, rise and join and director, director of bands, Dr. 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 Emily Trinan, Trinan, in the singing of our alma mater, Hail Minnesota. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Good hand washing protects you and can slow the spread of the virus. Use soap and warm water. Be sure to wash both sides between your fingers, fingernails, thumbs, and wrists. Scrub for at least 20 seconds. Wash early and often. Wash your hands, avoid big groups. Stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Received by Brooks, and he's not able to get it back to the 20 yard line. Yeah, short kick by Buffalo, but excellent job by their coverage team. And man, he took a pounding on that one. So Buffalo trying to set the tone early. A lot of people thought that they would be out of this game by intermission, but that is certainly not the case. Only down by seven points. And it's Dimbry Croft that will start the third quarter. As the quarterback tandem for the Gophers continues between he and Connor Rhoda. They go on the ground, try to get that run game going, and the ball is loose. Flag comes in. Smith lost it. But the flag first. This will not be a turnover. Trying to sort it out down on the field. Here's Greg Sujan. He had some microphone issues in the first half, and those are carrying over to the second half. We didn't hear it, you didn't hear it, but holding obviously was a call on Minnesota. I'm not, I'm not sure the number that he said. the distance to the goal and now that brings up a first and 19 so backed up Demry Croft near the goal line he's trying to get a big chunk out of this one no can do he was trying to add on to Tyler Johnson's big day 
good coverage by Cam Lewis, who had the interception at the end of the second quarter. Yeah, he was going stride for stride for him on the deep route. You can see it right there. And great job again. You saw him, the defender, look back for the ball. Normally, if a defender does that, you don't have to worry about pass interference. And that wasn't pass interference. That was just good coverage. 141 yards for Tyler Johnson in the first half. That's what he had all of last year as a freshman. This time, trying to use the legs. Flag comes in. Demry Croft is brought down around the 17. And we might get a hold on the receiver, Demetrius Douglas. So a couple of holding penalties hampering Minnesota to start the third quarter. And again, the mic unfortunately not working for Greg Sujak, but Minnesota going in the wrong direction, yeah. Coach Mason. Well, you know, I'm sure that was a hold on the wide receiver out there. You saw how long that ball took to get out there. I mean, that's an all-day block. You better pack a lunch. It's awful tough and when you're a true freshman you don't have a chance so second and 23 you would think they'd run the football here Taking the hand off, they throw a safe pass out to the freshman Douglas he gets a little bit of the yardage back but not a ton a quiet start the third quarter for Minnesota. But Buffalo's better to be careful. They're making substitutions, and without Minnesota making substitutions, they're going to get caught too many men on the field. They're able to get set here before a third and 17. They'll only rush three. Screen out to the left side to Douglas. Flag coming in as he's pushed out of bounds, well shy of the marker. This might be a hold on the tight end, Nate Wozniak. You think they decline it? It is indeed declined, and it was a hold on Nate Wozniak. So Lance Leipold has to like that start. This does not look like a team that was 2-10 and ten last year. No, and you know what? When you have a head football coach that's 109-6, and six, you would expect them in year three to get a little bit better. He was 5-7 in year one, 2-10 and ten last year. But to draw kind of a comparison, remember P.J. Fleck was 1-11. His first year at Western oh, Michigan it took him a while to get that program going in the back, and now Leipold is trying to get Buffalo going in the right direction. They certainly started off the third quarter the right way, did the Bulls. Don't kid with COVID. M Health Fairview wants you to know that what you do today will affect your family and our community tomorrow. Social distancing helps you avoid contact with those who may be infected with the virus. What can you do? Steer clear of crowds of 10 or more people. Keep a distance of six feet between you and others in public spaces. And if possible, work from home. Wash your hands, avoid big groups, stay home, don't go out. We've all got to do our part. Quick and loads quarterback comparison between Jackson and Rhoda, who's one of two guys throwing, along with Croft for Minnesota. Pretty even. Yeah, both pretty impressive, and both have good wide receivers. Both guys have big plays. Jackson had a 50-yarder, and Rhoda a 61-yarder. By all accounts, Rhoda and Croft on the side of Minnesota, they were sitting next to each other there. They have a very good relationship, and they've been pros all throughout camp talking about how this is them battling with each other, yes, but their teammates first as we're going to get a false start for Buffalo. You know, I think I jinxed these teams. I was bragging about both of them about first game penalties and first half very impressive. Second and Minnesota holding about every play and now we're having legal starts here. We shouldn't have gone to the locker room. Yeah, we, we've had four penalties. We haven't played two minutes here in the third quarter. 
The three holds on the Gophers, and now Anthony Johnson, the wideout, with a false start. Stacked receivers on either side, and they throw a screen. Nothing doing. Antonio Chenault. He's made quite a few nice plays tonight, number 34, and he made another one there. Yeah, it was a gimme for him. They threw the ball out quick, and the wide receiver threw it. No hitter on him. You know what I mean? He got a rolled up corner. You got to block that guy in that play. You got no chance. Last year, Buffalo just 16 and a half points a game. They were 126 in the country out of 128 teams in total offense. They've had glimpses here tonight as that pass will rattle in and out incomplete of the hands of Jacob Martinez. You know, they've, they have, though, Coach Mason, they've had some glimpses of looking better on offense Buffalo has. Uh, I, don't, I don't think there's any doubt about that, especially with their quick passing game. And, you know, now you see the second half. You see the corner rolled up against uh, the defensive secondary. Corners rolled up, not giving them that gimme throw. And now it's not so easy. Meanwhile, Minnesota's defense was one of the big reasons they won nine games last year. And they look sharp here. Jackson winding up again. But that went beyond the outstretched arms of his intended target, K.J. Osborne. Fourth down. Yeah, I know P.J. doesn't want us to look back to last year, but the job defensively that the Gophers did against Washington State in the Holiday Bowl, Mike Leach in that offense, that was unbelievable. No one saw that coming. That was a big-time upset getting them their ninth win. Yeah, but last year, the Gopher defense forced 25 turnovers, had 37 sacks. Both of those numbers, top 25 in the nation. And now it's a defense led by Rob Smith, who came north from Arkansas. He was the D coordinator for the Razorbacks the last three seasons. A booming high punt from DeWee. Antonio Chenault muffed the punt. But I believe he was able to get it back. And by the reaction of everybody, that is the case. So we praised his defensive prowess. Antonio Chenault, and he almost gave the ball back to Buffalo. But crisis averted as he jumps on it before Reardon can get to it. Second youngest head coach in Power 5 football, 36 years old, Lincoln Riley at Oklahoma, 33. He's the only one younger. As a play-action pass forthcoming for Demery Croft, who's back in the game, but he airmailed it. He had Demetrius Douglas incomplete. Yeah, he overthrew that ball. and Again, a little play-action pass to freeze Buffalo on defense, the under coverage, which he did. And he had enough time to throw it, but it's sailed. So back and forth we go between Croft and Rhoda. If you're P.J. Fleck, is your hope after this game to have a starter? I would think so. Yeah, I don't think he wants to go. His own admission, he does. Coming in, he doesn't want two quarterbacks. They've had trouble breaking big runs. That one almost was broken for a huge gain. Shannon Brooks is able to pick up the first down. Khalil Hodge, the last line of defense, stopped him. That's what makes him so dangerous. I talked about this guy. Not much there, but he squeezed through. He sees a hole. He's got patience. It's all in the hole. Boom. Now you see him. Now you don't. Ian Smith in the first half, the two in the backfield, averaging right around three yards per carry. That'll help the average. As he takes it out to the 37. And that one never got started. They got the legs tangled at Dimery Croft and Shannon Brooks. Yeah, Croft gets that tackle. <laughs> That's not what he wants. Nah. You know, those plays look so simple, but that's why you work on what we call backfield. Oh, that center got stuffed. I'll tell you, that's not very good there. Coach Warner not going to like that. 
Jared Weiler getting pushed back. He started at guard last year. They moved him over to center. And struggling on that play. Play action, rolling right, pressure coming, hit as he throws to no man's land. And a nice job by Cam Lewis coming in there and getting Demery Croft to the ground. Cam Lewis has had a nice game. Interception in the second quarter for Lewis. Junior out of Detroit, Michigan. He's their most experienced corner. Their defensive coordinator, Brian Borland, said Cam Lewis would be legit in any conference. Forget about the Mac. Wherever you put him, he would be legit. He's looked like it tonight. Play clock winding down. Just getting the snap off. Stepping up, and he's going to have to run for it, and Croft will not get the yardage that he needs. A little hesitation, and they came with the blitz. There wasn't anything there, and... Croft saw a seam in the middle. He just hesitated one second, you know, and that might have been the difference in gaining five more yards and moving the chains. He and Connor Rhoda share some words on the side, and this is a low punt by Ryan Santoso. But it does take a nice Minnesota bounce. Down near the 11. So the third quarter started pretty uneventful. Still 14 to seven. Minnesota nine of 15 on third downs. Third and long, there's the pass over the middle. Got it, it's picked up and down. The middle of the field, one, but it's got it for the touchdown. Bennett able to pick it off in midair and score. A nice Minnesota memory right there as they hope to have more of those this year. And right now they're in a battle with Buffalo 14 to seven. As Hawkins gets the carry for a short gain. Monday night, BTN continues the anniversary celebration with a look at the most exciting plays, highlights, and moments from the 2007-08 season. Don't miss BTN 10 big years. Presented by Auto Owners Insurance Monday at 7.30 Eastern right here on BTN. Yeah, they're, you know, they're in a battle. Minnesota's defense struggled early with all those quick passes and giving up a big one. And since then, they've played pretty well. Now their offense is struggling. So Minnesota defense on the other side has stepped up. And this is going to be a flag against Buffalo. Unless a timeout was taken. The flag did come down. Charge timeout, Buffalo. They're first. So they got the timeout before the false start. And they will pick the flag up and we'll step aside. So after the Buffalo timeout, a quick pass and a first down. As Tyree Jackson is able to find Antonio Nunn, the redshirt freshman from Tampa. That's what was working earlier in the game versus a soft corner, a corner that's backing up. You give that to them, they're pretty darn good at it. You roll the corner up, they have to go some other place, not so much. He's tied to the middle of the field, and K.J. Osborne holds it in. That's a nine-yard game. That a lot of teams think, here we go, second and one, it's a waste down. Go for the home run. If you don't get it, you run something and get a first down. Went back to K.J. Osborne, but he didn't get anywhere. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Tackled by Antoine Whitfield, Jr. Whitfield and McGee, the safeties are both back, but the starting corners, you were talking about corner coverage, Jalen Myrick and Keontae Harden. They're not there anymore for Minnesota, and those are two losses that hurt. Was he able to haul that in? They say yes. A first down grab by Jamal Island. They didn't think he was going to be able to go with a sprained ankle. That's the first time they targeted him. Yeah, when you throw the ball second and one and you don't get anything, you got to come back and throw it on third and one. It 
looked like a clean catch, but they're going to take another look. Island appeared to have cradled his left hand underneath the pigskin and keep control all the way to the ground. I tell you, you need a lot of confidence in your passing attack to throw it on second and one and third and one. Tough angle there. The other right. one. I think, you know, it was ruled to catch. It was ruled to catch. Let's look. That's a catch. I think it's a catch. That's a catch. Yeah, yeah they're not going to overturn that. No question. Just to confirm, though, let's bring back in our rules analyst, Dick Honig. Did you see what we saw there, Dick? Yes, I did, Brandon. And, uh, the only thing that I think they're looking at is whether that ball touched the ground. The tip of the ball, as that, that second shot showed, uh, that maybe touched the ground, but I don't think so. I think he had enough control After of the ball review, to make that a catch. The field is confirmed. Completed catch, first and ten. And that is correct. Greg Sujak says completion. And a first down, they show the confidence in Jackson to throw the football in that spot. And as I mentioned, Jamarl Island, who they didn't think would play with a sprained ankle, a huge grab. Yeah, and that's a big play. Doesn't look like much, but that keeps the possession of the ball. If he doesn't catch that, man, they're punted away. Last year, P.J. Flex, Western Michigan team beat up Buffalo 38 to nothing. It is a different story here tonight in the Twin Cities. An underhand toss out to the right side, but that play is going nowhere. Jonathan Hawkins quickly tackled by Jonathan Celestine. Yeah, Celestine, he sniffed that out right away. Uh, he almost got out there to, before the pitch got out there. That's the first time we've seen Buffalo run that action. I hope it's the last. Yeah, I was going to say, it might be the last. Now it's second and 11. Big 6'7", 245-pound Tyree Jackson, the signal caller. All the action to the left here. Instead, he's going to fake the throw to the left and take off up the middle to get out past the 40 to the 41. So they try to put some eye candy out to the left and get Jackson up the middle. Not a whole lot there. Buffalo does something that you don't see many teams do in modern day college football. It's called huddle. And we haven't seen Minnesota do that. Buffalo has gone no huddle at some points, but a huddle right there before this critical third and eight. Trip receivers left. He goes that way and it's intercepted. Picked off by Jacob Huff. said they think Huff is poised for a breakout year. The junior from Bolingbrook, Illinois. And he stops Buffalo's drive on that third down attempt. Yeah, Jacob made a heck of a play right here. The receiver looks like he's open. Now look at him. He's like the center fielder coming over and covering up for the corner. He intercepts the ball at the highest point. You see, after he looks the ball and he gets his eyes down the sideline to make sure his feet are in. Outstanding play. Tyree Jackson's made some nice throws tonight, but that was not one of them. They hand off to Rodney Smith. Pretty good chunky yardage that time. He'll get six before he's wrapped up by Ryan Williams in the free safety. Last drive was Demry Croft at quarterback. This one is Connor Rhoda. I know P.J. Fleck, as we said, wants to figure this out, but are you a member of the old adage crew that says when you have two quarterbacks, you have none? Yep, I am. You better make one or one or one or two, and you'll be better off. That's the intention of the coaching staff, but I don't know if they're going to be able to separate them after tonight. We've seen some good. We've seen some shaky from both. Now, now let me explain further. The reason I say that, you know how hard it is to get one quarterback ready with reps in practice? I mean, you typically you give your number one quarterback 70% of the reps, and you're splitting time. Awful tough to do. Between the tackles, a hard run there. 
close to the line to gain for Rodney Smith on third down. Minnesota says they got it. Buffalo says it should be fourth. They're going to measure. They are going to measure. Our first measurement of the 2017 season here on BTN forthcoming. I know you're on your own side of the 50, but if they're short, I would imagine they would punt, but I don't know. P.J. Fleck was, well, they are going to be a little bit short. If, you know, I'm not, I was always known as a risk taker, but if I am in this ball game right here, this time, the way it's going, I'd punt the ball. What I was going to say, though, P.J. Fleck was known as a risk taker yeah, in Western yeah. Michigan last year. He was 15 to 17 on fourth down conversions. Yeah, looks like he's going for it. He's talking to the offense. You know the crowd wants you to go oh, for it. Oh, yeah. They always go want you to for go it, for coach. it, coach. Yeah. Until you don't get it. Yeah, That's then, then, then. Revisionist history. And they're going to bring in Shannon Brooks in the backfield. Kind of wrote to the quarterback telling the crowd here at TCF Bank Stadium to quiet down. Up the middle, and he picks up the first as Shannon Brooks. Nothing fancy. Just let Brooks go right up the middle. But that is one of those, right, as a coach? I mean, you were in that oh, spot yeah. a lot. Oh, you get it, it, you're great. Every coach wants to do it. Who wants to punt the ball away on fourth and an inch, you know? And... But if you don't get it, that's the first question of the press conference afterwards. You got a coach to win. You got to do what you think is right. Can't listen to the crowd. Well, it worked that time. And now a fresh set of downs and another handoff from Rhoda to Shannon Brooks. We'll get it across midfield to the 48. It's been an uneventful third quarter, hasn't it? Yeah, and it's it. I talked about how clean a first and second quarter. This has been a sloppy quarter. Is that due to good defense? Sloppy offense, a little bit of both? I always blame the offense when it's sloppy. Well, it hasn't looked pretty on either side in the third quarter. Second and seven. Right back to the Brooks well. Third and very manageable. As he gets it inside the 45 before being tackled by the linebacker Ishmael Hargrove. Well, if you get it down the fourth and one again, now you got to go for it. You know what I mean? <laughs> Thing. So yeah. do you view this as four down territory? Well, the decision has to be made right now because the guy is calling the play. No, if it's not, he's going to throw the football most likely. Trip staggered to the right. Well, that didn't get much. Yep. A yard. That's going to bring up fourth and two. And another P.J. Fleck decision. <laughs> guy was a stud wide receiver at Northern Illinois, but this time he's going to bring out the punting unit. So on the other side of the 50, with fourth and about six inches, he went for it and got it here, fourth and two on Buffalo's side of the 50. They'll punt it away. He has a lot of confidence in Santosa down in the ball inside the 10 yard line, and that's what happens. Martinez opted to call for the fair catch inside the 10. So Buffalo will have tough starting field position when we get back to Minneapolis. BTN's late night show returns for another season with more fun, more hilarity, and more games with your favorite Big Ten athletes and coaches. It's Sports Light with Mike Hall returning Wednesday night at 11 Eastern right here on BTN. 309, third quarter. Buffalo football back inside their 10. This Minnesota defense has been strong, especially here in the third quarter, throwing on the run. And Tyree Jackson able to find his favorite target, Anthony Johnson. Well-designed play. You saw him take the great snap, fake to the right, roll out to the left. 
broke contained, put the ball right on the money. Anthony Johnson, the receiver. Cousins with Jadavian Clowney and also Jonathan Joseph for the Texans. That's a pretty good bloodline right there for the Juco transfer. And a 4 4 4 40 for him. Handoff left side. That time they go to Johnson with a run, and we have a moment. Let's go to Rick Pizzo in our Chicago studio. Long way to go, but I bet they're fired up down there tonight right now. Yeah, but as you said, long way to go. In the backfield and taken down. Great pursuit. Four Maroon jerseys getting in there, and leading the crew is Jonathan Celestine. Mentioned they called him Thumper. Yeah. As I say, he's the hardest hitter on the team. He sets the tone defensively, says defensive coordinator Rob Smith. Yeah, they, uh, that running attack is non-existent now for Buffalo. Can they handle the pressure? Third and 11. Five wide. Popped in the air and intercepted. No, he dropped it. Andre Thomas could not hold on. How many guys touched that ball? That was a double volleyball interception. Minnesota came with a four-man rush, twisted everybody. Buffalo did a good job picking it up. And nine out of ten times when that happens, that ball gets tipped. I mean, you're never going to have an easier interception than that. Thomas will be dreaming about that tonight. Redshirt freshman who sat out last year because of the depth they had with Myrick and Harden at corner. And he wishes he had that one back for sure. Chenault deep to take the punt. And the fair catch right around the 40. Sofi in the huddle on the Minnesota sideline. What do you think they're discussing before this next drive? Well, they got the ball back. Hey, the defense is playing good. Now we got the running game going a little better. Now all we have to do is execute. We don't need more holding penalties. We're stopping ourselves. We got to take the ball to length of the field and score right now. Offense stagnant here in quarter three with 112 left. Connor Rhoda will be the man in the quarterback position for this drive. Buffalo rushes four. Quick hitter out complete on the hash marks to Brandon Lingen. One of the tight ends. Well, this game's not over yet, but I know you're going to ask me before too long. Up to this point, what quarterback? If you could only go with one, who would you go with? I'd go with Rhoda. I was waiting till the fourth quarter. I know. I'm just, you ruined it. I'm just, you I, ruined I, it. I said right now. I might change my mind. <laughs> they say Rhoda, as we talked about, with a better arm. Croft gives you more of the option with his legs or the ability to throw it. Spinning forward toward the first down marker, Rodney Smith. It'll be close. Jared Franklin with a the tackle. There's the comparison between the two. Rhoda started and was out there for the first four series. That's the first phone call that P.J. Fleck made was to Connor Rhoda because Rhoda was leaving. Leaned his locker out. He was gone. The former staff said, hey, you're not, we're not going to renew your scholarship. So he was going to take his ball and go some other place to play. And P.J. said he looked at that depth chart. He didn't know anything about Rhoda. He says, but, you know, he can play quarterback. We need him. We don't have anybody. Yeah, he told him, please trust me. <laughs> he said, come back. We'll take you. We want you. And Rhoda came back and started here tonight. Quarter three in the books. Minnesota in a dogfight with Buffalo. Do you know what the U of M does for you? From farms to breweries and orchards to markets, discover how the University of Minnesota is cultivating a new crop of Minnesota businesses. 
Do you know what the U of M does for you? From hooves to hands and paws to possibilities. Discover how the University of Minnesota is making medical advances for all Minnesotans. Here we go with the fourth quarter, only seven points separating Buffalo and Minnesota. First to 10 for the Gophers right near midfield. Three receivers set for Connor Rhoda, but he will turn around and hand it off. Rodney Smith with a four yard gain. Yards by the quarter, and we see that the third was not overly productive, especially not for Minnesota. Yeah, but you know, it looks like they're going to settle into their bread and butter run game and then probably hit a play action pass off it. And as you mentioned, it's only a seven point game. There's not much breathing room here. Has the running game been better in the second half? Yeah, it, it has. It's more consistent. And they're on the verge of breaking when you can see that. Here is play action. He's got him. That's Douglas. First down before he's pushed out shy of the 30 at the 32. See, the formula for Minnesota, based on their history, has got to be you run, get the running tack going, you force the defense to cheat against the run, commit more guys to the run, then you go play action, and you have a wide-open receiver like you got right there. Well-designed play. Buffalo gave up 253 rushing yards per game last year, so that was a big concern for the Bulls. How would they contain Smith and Brooks? They did well with it in the first half. Pressure coming. And just heaving that away as Connor Rota fell to his backside. Second and 10. Yeah, well, Buffalo, they dialed up a maximum blitz there. And Rota, as he threw that ball, he knew he was going to take one right in the chops. And he was able to get rid of it. Yeah. Second and long. The 32 on the right hash and pressure coming in again that time though a nice job to slip through by Shannon Brooks and get to the 25 he easily could have been wrapped up in the backfield instead it's going to be third and three yeah he, he was hitting the backfield and you heard the crowd get into it because they see the determination by this guy he doing it all by himself Khalil Hodge did a nice job for middle linebacker came over because it's hard to tackle that guy one-on-one Brooks and Smith, a couple people have tried to give him a duo nickname. Some have said Slash and Bash, but Shannon, they want to have him be Bash. He said, I don't like that. We need a new nickname. So they're still in search of one. Those two tailbacks as Brooks stays on the field for third down, and they're going to throw it to him. He leaps up and grabs it. First down, Minnesota. out of the backfield by Brooks. Yeah, well, let me tell you, the previous play, he made the offense look good. That catch, he made the quarterback look good. Look at that. Man, that guy's an athlete. The vertical of the generously listed 6'1", Shannon Brooks. Do you have a nickname for Smith and Brooks? Good and better. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that we want to know which one's which. They're both darn good. Up the middle, it's time for Brooks again. <laughs> Well, you know, some days you're good and some days you're better. So today I'd have to say that Smith is good and Brooks is better tonight. It might change next week. Good and better. Smith is back out there now. Shannon Brooks is just happy to have his health after missing the first few games last year. That really put Smith in the catbird seat to be the go-to guy, and he exploded with over 1,100 yards and 16 rushing touchdowns last year. Rhoda fires a bullet that's incomplete. There was a tussle for it. Rashad still was the intended target. Tatum slapped the corner, was able to jar it free. 
we really haven't talked about still much tonight. He's the guy that was supposed to be the incumbent big target on the outside. Yeah, you're right. When P.J. Flick first got here, especially spring practice, he raved about that guy, you know, compared to some guys that he had at Western Michigan or now in the NFL. It's still not a catch on just a couple of targets for the junior Rashad still, and that brings up third and eight. It was 14-7 in intermission. It's still 14-7. And that went nowhere near. Way high on the pass from Rhoda. It was in the direction of Tyler Johnson, but he would have needed a 12-foot ladder to grab it. Yeah, Buffalo brought a blitz, but I, they were running into each other. It was, it might have been a blitz, but it was no pressure involved. Maybe some nervous energy now for the 36-year-old head coach, P.J. Flat. Emmett Carpenter will try to make it a two-score game. The snap and hold are good, and the kick is no good. How about that? Emmett Carpenter, who was 22 of 24 on field goals last year, has missed two in this game. Granted, the earlier was a 50-yarder. Yeah, he didn't hit that. He didn't hit that good. And dejection right now on the Minnesota sideline. Buffalo is still very much in it. Football on BTN is brought to you in part by State Farm, here to help life go right. Not a whole lot went right for either team in the third quarter. Now with 11.34 left of the fourth, we still sit at 14-7 after a missed 36-yard field goal by Emmett Carpenter. Now the Bulls take over at the 20. And this one's going backwards. Kamal Martin. With a tackle for a loss, a sophomore from Burnsville. I tell you, those lateral slow developing runs by Buffalo, they have not worked all night. I mean, Minnesota is just too good versus that. Their defenders are in great position, as I mentioned in the first quarter. Their shoulders are square. They just go right down the. You're lucky to get back to the line of scrimmage. That time they didn't get back to the line of scrimmage. Second 12. Sophomore Tyree Jackson throws out to the right, but not a whole lot there that time either. On the catch by Jacob Martinez. Tomorrow, the Scarlet Knights face a huge test open the season. They welcome Heisman hopeful Jake Browning and the defending Pac-12 champion Washington Huskies to Piscataway. That's tomorrow night at 8 Eastern on FS1. Plenty still to be decided tonight. Third down. Celestine brings the pressure, and Jackson just has to flip it away into the first row. He's saying he wasn't outside the pocket. They're getting together. The officiating crew right now to discuss well, let's it. Let's look at it. Ooh, I think he's right. Yeah, I think he's right as well. You see Fleck running down the sideline going crazy. Ruling on the field is that there was no grounding as the ball was near a player who is eligible. Fourth down. It's not reviewable. Yeah, it's not reviewable is correct. They say that it was in the area. It was definitely in the tackle box. Yeah. Albeit way back. I think the official, because he scrambled to his left and then he circled around, the official gave the illusion he was outside the box, but he wasn't. So the crowd and P.J. Flank did not get the call that they wanted, and now Buffalo will punt it away from deep in their own territory. to see a point here in the second half. As DeWean gets the right leg into it. And Chenault, who muffed a punt the first half, but was able to recover, catches it cleanly there. 
14 to 7. Stay connected with BTN across every platform and get access to exclusive video content. Like, follow, share BTN. Back with Glenn Mason. I'm Brandon Gordon. A game that's developing to be a good one, a nail biter here at TSF, TSF Bank Stadium. Minnesota takes over. They throw a quick one out to the left side to Demetrius Douglas, but that went the wrong way for a loss of a yard. Yeah, a little inside fake, quick throw to the perimeter, and Buffalo sniffed that one out. Connor Rhoda back at quarterback. He's got a majority of this series, although we've seen Dimry Croft for a few. But late this game, P.J. Flack is sticking with a redshirt senior. With Shannon Brooks in the backfield. Some pressure coming, hit as he throws. He's able to complete it to Nate Wozniak. First reception for the 6'10 tight end. He gets it after the 45. Yeah, he's running for his life on that one. Best pass defense is a pass rush. Hard to have a passing attack unless you protect the passer. They're lucky they got that away. Now a big third down offensively for the Gophers. Third down at six at Buffalo showing how improved they are on both sides of the football, especially really defensively. You see they only have seven points, but their offense has had its moment. But hit again as he throws, and that time Wozniak could not call it in and hit his hands, but he dropped it. Yeah, he's under pressure. He put the ball. Now you put it high. You want to put it high versus the guy at 6'10". Man, you got to pull that in. And most of the time, guys drop a ball like that because they take their eyes off it. Damone Harris brought some pressure indeed as Minnesota tries to down this before it gets into the end zone. No, but it will be a touchback. They say they were unable to do so, and that is the correct call. Good effort. The attempt here, close, but Peyton Jordahl can't get it. Senior former walk-on kicker Justin Juneman, the United States Marine Corps leader of the game, awarded a scholarship on August 9th in camp. Quite the story, very unexpected. But he has shown to be a great leader through camp, even though he was a walk-on kicker as play resumes. And Buffalo starts with a nice pass from Tyree Jackson out to Jacob Martinez. But here's more on the story. They were sitting in a team meeting room, and Kyle Tanner, who's a patient at U of N Masonic Children's Hospital, comes in, says he remembers Justin from coming and visiting him in the hospital. So he shoots his T-shirt at him, and Justin turns it around, and it says, congratulations, you just won a scholarship. And you know, you don't think of a walk-on senior kicker of being awarded something like that, but P.J. Flex said he showed that he's a good man, integrity, going to visit that kid in the hospital, and he awarded him with a scholarship. Great story. First and 10. And a jump ball that is incomplete in the direction of Anthony Johnson. Oh, a flag comes in very late. A very late flag. And Antonio Chenault, I don't know if he said something to Johnson after the play. But they're sorting it out. The result of the play was an incomplete pass. Sideline warning, Minnesota bench, their first. So a sideline warning on the Minnesota bench. That's a big point of emphasis this year is not letting players or coaches say stuff on the sideline or come out onto the playing field, even six inches onto the playing field, they will throw a flag. Yeah, long overdue. I mean, it's always been a rule. They haven't been enforcing it. They're going to enforce it now. you got to let the officials do their job. At that time, just a warning. Second and 10 for Buffalo. Shot of eight minutes off play action. A fireball 
headed the direction of Johnson again. That time incomplete again. Once again, Johnson battling out there with Antonio Chanel. Yeah, you know, if you're a corner and you're a, a lockdown corner and you're playing bump, run, and run, that is no place for the timid, I can tell you that. And the way this game has gone, you can see that with Jackson and those receivers, they like to test those corners. And they've been testing Chanel. He started the last five games in 2016, really thrust into the spotlight, and now supposed to be a lockdown corner this year. That one is incomplete. It was going to be well short of the line to gain anyway, but Tyler Mabry could not hold on. So the punting team will come on. Both offenses continuing to just stall out here in the second half. Yeah, with just over seven minutes to go, you get the feeling that even though Buffalo's down by seven, the first team that blinks is going to pay the price here. Buffalo running out of opportunities. A short punt that hits inside of the 35. It does take a nice Buffalo bounce. And they'll down it around the 22. Getting back to the Justin Judman story. He got the scholarship, and then he FaceTimed his mom, Charlene. Here was her reaction. <laughs> Those scholarships are worth a lot of money here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, let me tell you, my man there, 42. Carpenter misses another kick. You need to get in your helmet going in the game. <laughs> Earn that scholarship a little more. Yeah, really surprising with Carpenter missing, especially the 36-yard field goal. I mean, he was 22 of 24 last year, Big Ten kicker of the year. Pumping once, throwing back into the game is Croft, but unable to haul it in. His intended target, Tyler Johnson. He was one-on-one -on -one with Cam Lewis in the corner. Cam it, Lewis won that battle. Yeah, it seems like both teams using the same playbook, you know, just. Give the quarterback the ball, run the fade down there. Let's see if the wideout's better than the, the corner. I thought that P.J. Fleck had maybe settled into Connor Rhoda for the rest of the yeah. game, but now back to Demry Croft. Tyler Johnson has had a whale of a game, but all 141 of those yards came in the first half. Brown game with Randy Smith. Ten yards out of it. the calls offensively here up seven with seven minutes coach well I'm gonna tell you you want to get it this game down to where the clock is your friend and the way you get the clock is your friend keep moving the chains and if the run game is going run the ball with these guys wear them out they worked on that last play stacked receivers to the right it's not gonna work that time Rodney Smith is hit right around the line of scrimmage by the defensive end, Miles Nicholas. Well, here's the play I'd be coaching my defense on right now. If I think that those take those good backs, they're going to run in there. And you saw how Buffalo played right there. You better be ready for Croft pulling the ball out and going around the corner because he can run. They call him a fleet-footed sophomore. He started in the spring game. Hit Croft, but Rhoda getting the starting nod here tonight. He flips it out to Rodney Smith, coming out of the backfield, but not much doing there. Nope. Third and eight coming up. Now, now if you're Buffalo, you start thinking about this guy's got less experience than Croft. If they're going to throw the ball, let's light him up with a blitz. Maybe he'll make a mistake. Buffalo looks a little confused right now. Four wide. Minnesota five of 15, as you saw on third down conversions in this game. They'd love to make that six of 16. Blitz. Here comes the blitz. Croft takes off. Did he get the first down? I believe he did. Yes. He knew the yardage that he needed to get, and he just got it. Yeah. 
They came with it, but you, you know, you got to contain them. And there's two ways. You saw the defensive end got too deep, got an inverted line of scrimmage, and there was no pressure coming from the inside. Big first down as that clock continues to roll inside of five minutes. Croft on play action. Moving to the right. Flips it out complete across midfield to Phillip Howard. We also have a flag thrown in at the end of this play. the red shirt freshman with a reception here's the penalty the ruling on the field is that there is no foul for offensive pass interference the ball did not cross the line of scrimmage therefore the downfield block is legal the play stands so they pick up the flag and we go down to Kendra well guys we talked about the nervous energy of PJ Fleck you got to think that he's feeling it a little bit 14 to 7 here his first game as a head coach of a gopher team and playing against a team in Buffalo that really struggled last season so 14 to 7 he is pacing up and down this sideline between the 30 and the 30 non-stop and then every once in a while he goes to the benches behind him and finds a place to have a conversation and get in a huddle but it's a good thing this field is artificial surface and not real grass because he'd be wearing a run out on this near sideline. Uh, Kendra, he, he always does that. I think the difference, though, is the pace is maybe a little slower right now because of the nerves. And also, well, I think that's just an unhappy look on the face of P.J. Fleck as they're going to take another look at that last play. See, a guy can block downfield as long as the ball is touched behind the line of scrimmage. If it's not touched behind the line of scrimmage, then you can't block downfield. So I think that's what they're looking yeah. at. Where did Howard catch that ball? So the official review going on with 448 left, and every call right now at this stage of the game becomes bigger and bigger. Oh, this is, this is huge here. Let's bring Dick Honig back in. What do you think, Dick? Glenn, you had it just exactly right. If it's touched behind the line of scrimmage, it's a legal block downfield. And uh, it is now a reviewable play, which it hasn't been in the past. So touching of a football is clearly reviewable. After review, the ruling on the field stands. And the ruling on the field stands, says Greg Sujak. So no penalty. Yeah, I think they got it right. Dick, do you agree with Coach Mason? Right call? I do. Very so. He's got it on the line. <laughs> See, you said he never agrees with you. Yeah. I, I think you guys are perfectly in sync. Perfect harmony tonight. Maybe I have a, a, a future as an official. Did what do you think? Did you send him a holiday <laughs> card in the offseason? <laughs> so second down at two for the Gophers. Inside give. First down. Shannon Brooks that time. Brooks and Smith, both juniors, both from the state of Georgia. Shannon from Atlanta, Rodney Smith from Jonesboro, outside of Atlanta. And Hawkins, the running back for Buffalo, he's from Georgia too. A lot of good football in yeah. that state. Second all-time meeting between these two schools. Only other one back in 2002. Minnesota won it. It was at the Metrodome. 41-17, but who's counting? Charles Harris with a tackle there as Brooks carried it up the middle for a nice game. You remember that game, I would imagine? <laughs> well, maybe good guess. What do you think? <laughs> <laughs> it was 41-17, but coaches always say they remember the losses more than the wins, but... Hey, let me tell you that. That was at the Dome you mentioned. Yep. What a spectacular facility TCF Bank Stadium is, though. I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's a great venue, and I, I'm sure P.J. Flex is delighted this is his home. Well, now they're building the Athletes' Village. $166 million they're putting into that. First down carry. 
And now Minnesota really starting to chew the clock. Yeah, you look at it right here, and a couple more first downs typically, and you're running the clock down. And normally with Carpenter as a kicker, even if you didn't score, you get close enough field goal, not enough time. Ten point lead. Forget about it. The object is to win the game. You know that, don't you? I didn't, but now I do. Okay. I, I appreciate that. <laughs> you know I love to pontificate to but, you sometimes. But you're right. That's With Carpenter missing two field goals brings that into question if you are able to get a little closer. They're right on the edge of his range right now. Let me, let me say this, though. Even though they've gone to a run game, some of the calls that they've made while this game is in balance with a seven point in this last drive shows that P.J. Fleck has a lot of confidence in Croft. I mean, he left him in, but he just didn't leave him in to hand the ball off. He's running the offense. Let's see what Croft does here on second and eight. Takes it off. He's going to take it. A little space on the edge as he high steps out of bounds. Third down. And in the film tomorrow, PJ is going to say, 216, why'd you step out of bounds? You know? Put your nose in there. Try Put to your get nose in there or get down. Keep the clock going. But at the very least, make those other guys use their timeouts. So from here, it's about a 45 yard field goal, but a crucial third and three coming up before that. Thank you, Rick. 2.15 left and a third and three coming up for Minnesota. From here, it's about a 45-yard field goal. What do you draw up here offensively? First down. Well, there you go. <laughs> and what are you going to do to get that first down? Well, you know what? I'm not too sure that I wouldn't go back to Croft carrying the ball again, you know? He just had a nice gain around the right side. I mean, they use the form, same formations all the time, but... Take the back inside, let him go around the end, see if they've got it. Instead, he hands it to Brooks, straight up the middle, and I think he has enough. It was a smart call because they were coming with a strong safety blitz. He would have kept the ball. Whew. He probably saw that. First down. And you. You see what Brooks is saying, give me the ball. Rubbing his stomach, I'm hungry. Feed me. <laughs> give me the ball. Time, timeout taken by Buffalo with 2.09 remaining, and now things are starting to look more bleak for the Bulls out of the map. Well, you know, now, now you now you got to really gamble. You know, if you think that Minnesota's really – going to try to just run that clock out and you run it back so you got to throw the kitchen sink at the run you know again you, you just can't play it by the book and then they just run the clock out and you go home 14 7 you think you had a moral victory you got to do something because you got to stop them you got to rip the ball out you got to cause a turnover and so when you say throw the kitchen sink at the run expand what do you mean about well, I'm, that? I'm gonna i'm gonna really cheat against the run i'm gonna put nine men up there my nine guys committed to the run and obviously you got to cover the wide outs and so you're going to leave those guys hanging on an island out there. So if they if they do pass, it might be a, a big one. But but you want to dare them my, to do that. My safety is going to be coming downhill. He's going he's to be biting on the run if, even if there's no fake. Buffalo now out of timeouts. Minnesota dominating the time of possession. It's become more skewed here on this drive. It's made. Their ruling is under further review. Now we're going to go all the way back and look to see if that was actually a first down gained by Shannon Brooks. <laughs> It appeared that he got it. They did not measure. 
And here comes Neil Diamond, just in time. <laughs> Sweet Caroline, <laughs> blaring through the loudspeakers bop, bop, at TCF <laughs> Stadium. <laughs> Is a big point of emphasis as we get another look. Let's take a peek at this play first. I don't know how you overturn that. Man, I think you've got it easily. Well, one thing that is a point of emphasis is trying to speed things up. That's really, they said the half times will only be 20 minutes. And in and out of plays, the officials are really encouraged to hurry on these reviews. They're encouraged to hurry. And I will say the game has moved at yeah. a little bit of a faster pace tonight, hasn't yeah. it? Yeah, it's a, our big fear is that we'll miss a stat well, because a, they come a, at us so fast. A couple you know? times we did miss yeah. the kickoff out of commercial break. I don't know why. It's just my opinion to speed up the game. Why don't we go to like the NFL and not stop the clock on first downs? Yeah. You're a proponent of that? Yeah, I mean. Well, you know what happens if they if they change it, then you gotta go back to see where the ball was and all that stuff. Just surprised if they thought it was that close that they didn't measure. Here's Greg Sujak. Well, first, they'll have one more meeting. Both coaches certainly anxious to find out what the call is here. If he was short of the line to gain, and they do bring it back, it's fourth down. After video review, it was determined that the ball carrier's knee was down short of the 25-yard line. The ball will be put at the 25-yard line. Fourth down, one yard to go. Buffalo is charged with the timeout. The clock will start on the snap. Wow. Watch for the knee here, coach. I am shocked that that got overturned. Well, you can't tell from that angle. Ryan Williamson was blocking the view. Dick, are you as surprised as we are here in the booth? I'm surprised they didn't do it sooner because there, there was clearly a, a possibility that his knee was down short of that yard line, and that was exactly what they were looking for. I didn't see a replay that allowed them to make that change, but there may have been one in the, that we have not seen. So what they probably should have done, Dick, was just measure right away, correct? Well, see, you can see in the replay you just put up is that knee was down. Now they've got to place the ball at the point at which his knee was down. And so now it's fourth down. And Emmett Carpenter, who has missed two field goals, there you see them, one from 50 and one from 36, will try this from 43. The kick is on the way, and that one is good. Third time, a charm for the redshirt junior from Green Bay, Wisconsin, Emmett Carpenter, and it gives Minnesota a two-score cushion. Well, credit Buffalo's defense are making a play on third down that they had to make to put them in a situation there, and, you know, I'm sure some people say, oh, you think PJ's going to go for it? you got a kicker like Carpenter. He missed two. But in that, in that range, you've got to go right there, and you know that he makes the field goal. You know, for all purposes, unless something really weird changes like them returning this thing for a touchdown in the kickoff, you got it. Well, it's one thing if your kicker was a freshman and he was 0 for 2, but when you've got the Big Ten kicker of the year, you trust him. I've never heard coaches rave about a kicker the way the P.J. Fleck and his staff did in our meetings yesterday. Yeah, well, I wonder if we were meeting with him tomorrow, what he'd say. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got a guy make 22 out of 24. Yeah, right? he only missed two all of last year. And then missed the two here, but made the third, and that really is the one that counts. As Jacob Martinez takes this from the five yard line and he'll step out across the 20. Tonight after the game, 
get an all-access look into the world of the new Gophers head football coach on being P.J. Fleck. That's tonight right here on BTN. I saw those episodes. That was a well-done show. Yeah, it was. Very entertaining. Yeah, it was. An interesting guy. It's, uh, he's got people fired up in the Twin Cities in the state of Minnesota. Yeah, he sure does. There was a buzz around campus today as that one through the hands of Martinez. We got a lot going in the Twin Cities. We got the Gopher game tonight. We had the Twins this afternoon. The Vikings are playing tonight. Right. And yeah. the Minnesota Great Gathering, whatever they call it, the State, State Fair is going Fair. on. I mean, man. I can't believe we kept you in your seat the whole game. I thought you'd be over at that State Fair eating a fried Twinkie. And now I'm off to Lincoln. It's another college football game. Who's better? Who's, yeah, who's got, got a better deal Saturday than I do? on BTN, and I've got Nevada at Northwestern Saturday on BTN. Action-packed weekend. Week one of college football. Second down throw. Wide open complete. With that soft coverage underneath Anthony Johnson able to get seven yards, third and three. I tell you, without a doubt, Minnesota's going to win this football game, I believe. Buffalo is a much, much improved football team. This time they'll get it to Jonathan Hawkins. Tailback. And that'll bring up fourth down as Buffalo, with their backs against the wall, is going to have to go for it. Even though they have seven points, I asked you the first half, does their offense look better than last year when they only averaged 16 a game? And you said yeah, yes. I, I don't think there's any doubt about it. The first game, and you know, you don't go from being terrible to being great o overnight. They're going in the right direction. They got some players. They got a good quarterback. They got wide receivers. The defense is playing better. They got a pretty good kicking game. They're going to be all right. Right now, they just need a first down to have any hope, and they won't get it. And with 91 seconds left, Minnesota can milk out a victory for P.J. Fleck on his opener. He's going to pull his tailbacks, Rodney Smith and Shannon Brooks, in for a quick word. Probably telling them that motto that he likes. The ball is the program. Hold on to it. Don't fumble. Yeah. Looks like he's just going to yeah, take gonna it say, in. They don't even need to hand no. it off because Buffalo has no timeouts. And so Connor Rhoda will go down to a knee. He'll have to do that again. Coming up after the Indiana-Ohio State game finishes, it'll be the final drive presented by Auto Owners Insurance. So be sure to stay tuned right here to BTN. We'll recap that one, of course, this one as well, and discuss what they saw back in the studio, Rick Pizzo, Howard Griffith, from this game. Seven points, by the way, the lowest point total by a Minnesota opponent since 2006, when they beat Kent State 44 to nothing, that in a season opener. But offensively, they had some struggles. And back in that game in 2006, you were the coach, correct? Yeah, I was. And I used to be the coach at Kent State, too. Yeah, we're talking about all your victories. Talked about the one over Buffalo back in the Metrodome. I didn't have enough for our. If I did, I wouldn't be sitting here with you. <laughs> <laughs> you were here for 10 years. Let me tell you something. That's pretty good. Yeah. 10 great years. Thank you. P.J. Fleck does win the opener. Maybe not as comfortable as he had hoped, but 17-7 to as the Golden Gophers outlast the Buffalo Bulls to get to 1-0. say a win is a win is a win if you're P.J. Fleck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you go in there and you, you know, you're right. He's probably disappointed. His players had higher expectations. Everybody expected, everybody did. I mean, we wouldn't have guessed the score. When you go in there, you know, he's so positive. You tell the guys, hey, you play to win. We hung in there. We got better as the game got on. We're on to week two. 
I don't know though that he figured out what he's going to do with the quarterback position. Yeah, I, I don't think so either. I don't. I'd be very surprised if he would definitively come out and say, "This is the guy." Let's go to Kendra. She's with Coach. Thanks, guys. Well, Coach, your first official victory in the Big Ten here with the University of Minnesota here at TCF Bank. How does it feel? Uh, it feels elite. Really does. You know, a win is a win. We didn't play particularly well, but I'm very proud of our defense. Their their resilience uh, to continue to come up with plays. I thought we moved the ball well on offense at times. Just kicked ourselves in the foot. So uh, we got a lot to work on, a lot to work on, but this is the first right step. I'm proud that they were able to find a way to come out with a victory. Speaking of that offense, you didn't score a point since the first quarter until two minutes left in the fourth. Anything in particular that you can put your finger on? In experience. We got to get them experience as fast as we possibly can. Great. Thank you so much. Congrats, Coach. Go, go, Sky Yuma. Go, go. Got in a Ski Yuma there at the end, he did, but... I said he might say a win is a win, and that's what he taught. He said he talked about with all the youth that they have, but that youth is able to pull out a 10-point victory. Yeah, he's talked quite a bit about the youth of this football. 40-some percent of the team, either freshman or redshirt freshman, no experience at quarterback, great experience at running back. Uh, but I think you, you could tell. I mean, we've been around him enough. I mean, he's always going to say the positive thing, put a positive thing. You can tell him. There's some disappointment in his voice tonight. Let's go back down to Kendra. She's with Connor Rhoda. Well, Connor, thanks for joining me. A victory here for you guys tonight to start out the season under P.J. Fleck, at kind of the new era. How right. did it feel out there? Uh, it felt awesome. felt good to finally get hit. felt good to see a different color jersey out there and to finally cheer for our defense. You know, we've been going against them, and they got so many dudes over there that are just players. and giving us riots all training camp and it just felt great to be out here see all the fans and just play and really I mean it's been a long a long journey since coach came here in January and there's been lots of ups and downs but this team's really come together and it's awesome to see us have this opportunity finally to come together and show this whole state and all of our fans the team we've become. Well congrats on the first one of the season good luck next week. Thank you very much. And Connor's a good story. I mean, he was not going to be renewed on his scholarship by the previous regime. P.J. Fleck called him and said, trust me, we need you. I'm going to put you on scholarship. And he started here tonight. Helps him to get the win. Yeah, it, local kid played over at Creighton Durham. Uh, it's, that's a lot of great football players, baseball players, athletes come out of there. And uh, you can tell he's really happy about the win tonight. That'll do it from here in Minneapolis. Stay tuned. Episode 3 of Bing P.J. Fleck is coming up next. This has been an exclusive presentation of the Big Ten Network for Glenn Mason and Kinder D. St. Aubin. I'm Brandon Gunn saying so long from Minnesota.